from Jana with Pearl together, and I am so honored and happy to invite Wilma Malcolmson and Terry Lisk to the podcast today. Welcome. I'm so glad you were able to join me this afternoon. Well, it's morning for me, afternoon for you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Hi, it's so Thank exciting. You. <laughs> I'm, I told Terry when we messaged, I was having a little fangirl moment. I have so much, I feel so honored and I have so much respect for the design process and what you're able to do, both of you. I think uh, Anne Frost from I Thought I Knew How, she said it best. I saw her comment the other day online. When we look at your designs, they have the Malcolmson glow. Oh, that's good. I never saw that one. That's quite funny. (laughs) That's well, it's true. This year, the way that you're able to blend the colors, it makes particularly the center of the motif where you have that, you know what I mean? (laughs) Where it has that lighter, the shift in the gradient goes to the lighter. It has that glow, and it's just, it just Mm. makes me happy. (laughs) Yeah. We can see there is some similarities with our designs and people do notice that it belongs to one of us. So that's really, that's nice that other people are seeing that too. The Malcolmson glow, (laughs) right? Terry Terry has always been around me. When she was a little girl, she would come here and knit. And then maybe in your, when you were a bit cooler, (laughs) you didn't come so often. And then she came back in a big way. Yes. Yeah. It's just amazing. I love both of your designs so much. And it's so fantastic that you're able to be a patron for Shetland Wool Week twice. I think that, oh, oh it's <laughs> lovely. And I think it's well-deserved. And I think the world needs that. I, I, it's so, been nice. Yeah, because well, we didn't know, obviously, the first year that there would be two years. But it's nice that the designs have linked up and there's a whole story running through the, them both that's... It's been That's good. Cool. We're kind of completing the story a little bit. Yes, so it's because nice. first it was my mother, and this year it's my father. Yes. That's been honoured. So I have to weave in the ends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's Katie's cap. Yeah. Got the matching one here. Well, <laughs> yours is a little different. I had to substitute some, you know, stash, some stash wool that I had already. So my color's a little different. But I just, oh man, I love the crown. I love, I just love it so much. And I have to wave in all my ends. It's but, just amazing how the crown just happens. The decreases mm-hmm. makes the crown just happen. Yeah, it comes together yes. so nicely, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes, and I took Terry's class, her your crown class, and it's just fantastic. I, I, I have tried to design a hat, be- a, you know, a beanie before, mm-hmm. and, and it's really hard. <laughs> it's, <laughs> for me, it's really hard. So I have tremendous respect for what goes into this. It's just. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely hat. something to get your head around. Ah, um, no pun yeah. intended. <laughs> I, think, I think we're so encouraged to see so many knitters trying to design and doing the knitting. And so this was the first one from last year, and this was named for your mother. Yes, that was Katie's cap. And actually, it was the the small pattern she taught me when I was just a girl. The the little pattern here? Yes. And even the the larger motifs on here, they're small compared to the motifs we would usually knit. Yes. Right. That was it. That was completely. I only. I thought I only had one year to do this, and so I thought I'll do something different from what I would normally design. Right. Right. So, this is my youngest daughter has claimed this one. So I will have to. <laughs> I'll have to knit another one for myself, and then the beach cap that I made that Terry's pattern. I'm not giving that one to anyone. That one's mine. <laughs> But my youngest daughter has claimed this one. <laughs> but then everyone, I have two daughters and and so there's four of us, but everyone has picked the color they want for this year's hat. Oh, good. I'm going to have to- A family photo. Yes, oh, we should. need to see a family yeah. photo. I should, and I'll send it to you. Yeah, yes. we definitely yes. want to see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. So your parents, this, this one was for your mother, and then this year's, the crofters kept, Yes, my father was a crofter, so I named the crofter's cap. 
after him. And for viewers that may not know, a croft is a farm. A right? croft is a small farm. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and so you're crofting, crofting has really been so important in Shetland life because it's just what people did. Yeah. Maybe along with a fishing boat right. to make their to make their living. Yeah. It's a huge part of family life it here is. as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it is, it's nice to be able to honour crofters and um, just kind of shine a light on them that they maybe they're working every day, you know, fine well, John, it's, <laughs> it's work every day. Yeah. And um, especially now, it's quite common for crofters to have, they'll have their main employment and then the crofting is on the side, but it's such a lot of work. So mm -hmm. I think it's nice to be able to, to shine a light on it, tell the story a bit more too. So it's good. Yeah, it is. And so on your family, when you were growing up, Wilma, you had you had Shetland sheep? Oh, yes. Um, I actually don't remember learning to knit because we just, it was just something we did. My mother um, knitted, as all the ladies around her, they knitted to sell, right. so to help the economy of their craft. Yeah. So you, they knitted especially from the wool from their yes, specific craft did. as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And so was this hand knitting or did they have the machine or both? Oh, no, it was all hand knitting at that time. Right. And uh, my father was a crafter and he was particularly in, interested in retaining the Shetland breed of cattle. Cattle was actually his main interest. But then we had hills and we had hills, Shetland, Shetland sheep in the hills. Okay. And I do remember being so impressed seeing them being driven in. Yeah. Because they were scattered around. You never really were much aware of them until they came in to be clipped or, or all the things needed done. And so when you were young, did you learn to spin also? No. Spinning is just a, a world that I've never been involved in. We could speak about how what happened when the fleece came off and then how you got your yarn. Because that's a bit different. Oh, to yes, one. yes. There was a firm called TM Hunter in the north of Scotland. Now, we always saved some fleeces and posted off that bag of wool to this firm. Now, can you imagine as teenagers, we were quite embarrassed to be sent to the post office with a smelly bag. <laughs> But the excitement when the yarn came back was wonderful. So you sent you sent it to the mill to be yes, to, to be, be spun. skirted and cleaned and smoked. Yes, just all of that. Oh, uh -huh. and dyed as well. And dyed. Oh, okay. And, and then the ladies, the knitters, they knew what colors they would be knitting. So um, they got the yarn to use and they knew which colours to send for. So they had a limited range of colours, you had to be quite creative. Like... You did and I do say that every knitter who starts knitting something is a designer in their own right because the design and their patterns that was used to be how it was. Yeah you couldn't go and look for patterns you had to make the most of what you had and come up with something. Yeah. Right. And use the wool you had as well. There was no looking at a shade card with X number of beautiful colors. <laughs> you looked at your stash and decided what you could do with what you had. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, you know, they didn't have, you couldn't go on Ravelry. And <laughs> back then. No, no. You had to sit with your mother and your grandmother and look at what they'd done. And did you just duplicate the patterns that they taught you? Oh, I always wanted to do something different. <laughs> but no, um, I was particularly interested in fair isle knitting. And then we had a lady next door who knitted fair isle cardigans and jumpers. And she taught me how to knit all over fair isle pattern garments. Oh. This is something I don't know. Did you have it on? Did you have the motifs on a piece of paper, or do you have something on your? Yes, own? everybody had an old graph book, mm. and you graphed out the pattern. Right. The square knot. And then she could tell me the number of stitches, and because there was no patterns, we had never seen a pattern, printed pattern. 
<laughs> so when you decided to begin designing and making patterns to share with others or to uh -huh. sell, you had to figure out how to write that up in a way that other knitters could understand around the world. Yes, well, I have to say Terry has been a big, big help in that. That's the thing, considering how long you've been knitting and designing, it's very recent that we've had to write anything down in a That's way right. that somebody else could understand. <laughs> so that was, was that 2016? Yes. Was the first uh -huh. time? So, oh. Yeah, so it's really not long. <laughs> oh, that's only a few years. That's only yeah. five or five years or so. So we had a quick study session of mm -hmm. how things in... Believe me, the, the crown chart was probably the main hurdle. Oh, that was, I can remember the day we <laughs> did our first crown chart. Because we just had things written down either in words or just copying from another hat. We never had it on a piece of graph paper. So no. um, that was a really interesting <laughs> learning curve. But, and then now we're, we, we're just learning all the time. We've come across patterns written in a different way. So it's still very new to us, I would say. I do think with knitting, you, you, you keep learning your entire life. Love There's that. always something new to learn, or a new idea. And you're always coming across new knitters as well with new ideas, especially since we're all online. And especially this year where we've been sharing more online rather than meeting in person and there's always more people to learn from which is always exciting well and that is you know that's one thing i've said all along through this worldwide pandemic i mean it's a horrible situation but one positive feature has been just being able to meet people more and having i'm so thankful that we have zoom that we have a way to connect yes. you know mm -hmm. even 10 years ago it would have been much more isolating you know you yeah, well, me and you only connected because of this whole situation as well. So that is right. well, it's actually interesting. actually in Shetland, we didn't know there was all those people throughout the world knitting fair iron. <laughs> we thought maybe it's just here. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. such a funny, it's such a classic Shetland mindset, I think, because we're such a small place and we're so consumed with what we are doing here. <laughs> that we never really consider that people are maybe taking notice or enjoying it as well. So oh, it's, it's wonderful. Really open things up. Yeah, it is. It's really good. And there's nothing more exciting as sitting knitting a fair isle pattern and seeing how it develops yes. and the colors you're using. Yes, and I, that's one reason I wanted to host this knit along on the channel is because I think that your patterns are great for a first Fair Isle experience. I think we can help people get started. And so with the Crofters Cap, I am intending to do, you know, kind of instructional video and the pattern's free. Yep. And that's so generous of you to offer that to everyone. And so then, you know, it's, it's really very easy even for beginner knitters because I keep telling people it's only one stitch at a time. You can do this. You can <laughs> do this. Yeah, yeah, you just need to follow the chat and it'll grow. My instructions for the Katie's Cap last year was to make a simple pattern, as simple as I could make it, to encourage new knitters. And I've really been amazed at how many people have used Katie's Cap pattern as a first attempt. Yes. It's yes. wonderful. But it's such an encouraging pattern as well because you... You get onto a new section of it, and then it's completed. You get onto the next section that completes. It's really, mm -hmm. um, it's quite, it's quite a satisfying knit as well. It is, and then you end up staying up until two or three in the morning because you want to see. Oh it. yes. <laughs> yeah. And then I think the oh, I've done that different. so many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you know, I still have to get up and go do my farm chores the next morning. Like I, you know, the the animals don't let you sleep in. No. <laughs> <laughs> I found as well the crofters cap seems to have been a really good next step for people as well because the motif is just a little bit bigger more kind of the size that we are used to really mm -hmm. um and you get just a different opportunity for color it's not any more difficult or not more simple it's just different and I think it's it's been encouraging that people have just jumped right in it's only been out a couple of weeks so That's right so um yeah <laughs> I'm so happy that you did, were able to do this twice. Do you have, did you bring the the samples of the crofters kept? Do you have them there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I would love to, I would love for you to tell me about 
the different ones and how, first of all, let me just say, I think it's amazing that you've put together that many color combinations. <laughs> We're not done. <laughs> We're not amazing. Finished, but... <laughs> but that's fantastic. And the one that I'm so excited to cast, I may cast on today. And that's my problem. I have too many other things I should be doing, but I can't help it. No, you've got to do it. Let's speak about this one first then. Yes, that was Ch that was from Jimmy Sins. Spindra. Yeah. yeah, this spindra. And I, yeah, and I do find Jemisons have so many beautiful blues. Yes. Yes. And um, yes. two words I use so often is contrast and blending. You need contrast in your background and pattern colors so that you actually see the motif. And then blending is putting the colors blending them together so that not one of them is too prominent. That's what creates the Malcolmson glow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that blending, I think, is truly what creates that. Because if the center motif there, where you're blending from the blues to the lighter color in the center, that's amazing. It's just lovely. Yeah. And then, of course, the crown is, I mean, it's just beautiful. I did worry about this one because, you see, this border, we call this border patterns. This one, the color is reflected in the center row. Yeah. So that you need to be careful not to have a too prominent border color or you will get a strong line in the center of your pattern. Yeah. yeah. So you've heard me this, I in some of my classes and I'll show the design and then I'll tell you everything that I thought maybe I should have changed about it. <laughs> so you know where I got that from. That's something that she was worrying about too. But it's funny when once it's all done and you're yes, you, you have this feeling that it's complete, then it's you know that you're finished with it. Mm -hmm. And some of them did not just happen immediately. Some of them I had maybe two attempts to get. To Which one would right. you say that was? Oh, that was the Jimmy Snow Smith mm -hmm. one. I did that one and I wasn't happy with it, so I started again. I, that's it's come out so well. Yes, that's the one I was saying that I thought, I didn't know my husband would choose that one, but I have that kit coming in the mail today. That's, and that's just mm -hmm. fantastic. For me, I think this is the colors that I think of when I think of Granny as well. This oh. is um, <laughs> some of your kind of, the longest lasting yes. designs are in this type of color so you know that the designs i did at the very first when i started my business first we're still knitting them yes and they're still the most popular yes, they're very popular yeah so i knew there would be one like this somehow mm. <laughs> yes my husband loves that i love that color it's very earthy and you know reminds me of all the trees in the autumn and the mountains and it's just mm -hmm. Yeah, it has the glow. <laughs> <laughs> we did a fun one. Yeah. yeah. Now that that's Ur Uradel. That's a relatively new firm uh, mm -hmm. producing yarn, and um, I love their greens and golds and. Yeah, that reminds me of the the sh the fields across the. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Interestingly, too, I have, you know, I mentioned Anne Frost earlier. She had some Uradale yarn in her stash, and she chose to reverse the background. And so the Ooh. one that she's working on has a dark background, and it's very interesting. Yes, yes, you see, we often do that. This one is a light background, so we can redesign it in a dark background. Right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Anne's when I saw her yarn yeah, side by side, but I've not seen um, when she started knitting yet. So that's exciting. Yeah, it's lovely. Oh, and yeah. I love that. See, I love those natural, <laughs> I, I love them all, I really. But I love that one definitely has the glow because of the blending with the natural colors. And yeah, it's wonderful. Natural colors, natural colors really always work. Because they're natural. They blend naturally. They blend. Yeah. And that's from Fula, which is the small island on the west coast of Scotland, of Shetland. Okay. And so that's got uh, 
they produce yarn from the sheep that live on Fula as well. So it's a very small community. Um, and it does, um, it's, it's, it's quite remote. I would say it's one of the more remote it islands. Is. I'm sure it is, yes. It's a real, you have to really organise if you want to come to Shetland mainland. So um, it's a special story for people who have links there, who have been there, or are just generally interested. It's definitely um, full of wool as one to look into. And then this was a really nice wool to knit. Mm. It was like substantial. It was lovely to knit. Yeah, do you feel it was uh, strong and... Strong, yes. Yeah. So that was good because we don't often have a chance to try out lots of different kinds so you've really enjoyed oh i have really enjoyed trying the different yarns spending time with mm -hmm. them as well which is did you good. get to go did you get to go to the fuller island when you uh, no no we just it, i got it in the post they posted the yarn to me yeah it's quite it is quite remote <laughs> yes. Yes. oh and i love that one as well the no, color that... is so rich on that. Mm -hmm. That's Shetland hand spun. That's Elizabeth Johnston. She's um, spun the yarn herself and dyed it. Wow. Wow. So that is a special one. Very. It's nice to well, because she's a good friend of yours too. She is, so yeah. it's, it's good that it's included and um, yeah. it's come together so nicely as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's busy. busy. I'll bet she's oh, busy. She's oh, always she busy. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's going to love that. She's probably, <laughs> oh dear, spin, spin, spin. <laughs> Last year she took so many orders that she had to spin, I think, all summer. <laughs> so this year I think she is putting a cap on it. She won't take as many. She's yeah. always, always busy though. She's... Mm -hmm. She gets it done. She's that's very, she very <laughs> that's really special. There's a couple of bonus ones that we've got here. Yes. So this one. Oh wow. now that's there's two new firms producing yarn in Coningsborough. In this village. This village. Yeah. Oh. And this is um Easter U. <laughs> it's a strange name, <laughs> but it's um from a craft. So Easter is a place in the village and U is just Wu Ooh. in Shetland dialect. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, they just brought out new colours. Um, two when, years ago. Maybe. Was it two years ago? Yeah. So very recently they've started. Um, so it's nice to, to make a hat in their colours and yeah. see what comes out. I would say it's a different feel to the others. It's, it's, it's a nice yarn. Yeah. It really is. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of been a new experiment mm -hmm. this year. And it's so lovely that you're able to help promote the smaller crafts and the, you know, that's right. yeah, the, and the small businesses. Oh, that's beautiful. This is actually my next door neighbor. We have a farm next door and they have decided to turn their wool into yarn. Oh. So they only started last year. Yeah, so. these are very new. So this is Laxdale yarn. Laxdale yarn. So this is it's so vibrant as well. These colours, I really yeah. like this one. And do they do they have a shop online as well? They both do. Yeah, they both do. Yes. Good. And the this firm is actually producing patterns, so that's quite interesting as well. I brought my one as well today, so this was my take on it. Um, yeah, so this is from Jimmy's of Shetland as well, and I, I've just really been interested in this pink color lately. Mm -hmm. Um, it's one that I didn't use at all, and then all of a sudden I used it in one design, and I just keep testing it out in different contexts. So, um, yeah, I was happy with how it came out with the green. So that's the one I'll be wearing at Woolwick Week time. Nice, so, just beautiful. I want to see the crown. Can I see the crown oh, yeah. on that one? <clears throat> how the pink? Oh, yes. That's mm -hmm. lovely. Nice. Yeah, it's just got a life of its own in this one, I think. The pink, it's <laughs> doing its own thing, but I quite like it. Yeah, definitely. But you see, we never want to knit anything that anybody else designed. We want to do our own, always. <laughs> Jana knows I can't be told what to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I'm a little the same. <laughs> <laughs> But it's so hard. I mean, I, I've just tried to design this very simple beanie and I'm having such, it's not Fair Isle. It's just, you know, 
and I'm having such trouble with the decreases making the making it look the way I have it in my head. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I, I have so much respect for you being able to do that and to come up with all those different color combinations. That's amazing. But just remember, it doesn't happen overnight either. We do have a lot of trial and error as well. Yes, so. definitely. And this did take quite a long time doing all those. Right. And yeah. perfecting each one as yes. well. And you're still, you know, going on with your rest of your life and you have a shop, right? Yes, well, not, I do. You have a, mm-hmm, yeah. So I want to put the link to your shop. Well, my shop is called Shetland Designer. And um, it's just a shop. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the there's a shop room in there and then also in the back we've got the whole workshop so that's where you do most of your work that's yes. where the knitting machines live um we have irene that works here as well she's worked here for as long as i've been around um so she's just part of the the whole yes, scene mm-hmm. um we also have a big table in the back there where we um host the knitting classes yes okay. we have knitting okay. classes um so we managed to fit a lot into that and building. then i've been designing patterns all my life it seems yeah. <laughs> for a long time anyway and i keep all my swatches so around the walls i have swatches on the walls just it's a portfolio all over every wall yes i want to do that that's fantastic right. it really is because you would tend to lose them or forget about them so do you, frame, do you frame them and then write on there what it is? Do you frame it? Uh, well, no. I, I put a backing. I iron on a backing so that they're stiff and they don't unravel. Right. And then I put them up on cork boards usually. Oh, just pin them up. Just yeah. pin them up. Yeah. Um, well, but you know the story to each one off by heart. I do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes it's things that people have asked me to design mm-hmm. and then there it grows into something else and, and joins the collection so it's mm-hmm. all <laughs> yeah so and just to i think viewers might not understand when you when you talk about machine knitting you machine knit a, a body of a sweater and then and then do you do the yoke by hand or not yes okay yes the yoke has got to be done by hand because it's not it's circular and you have the decreases Right. But then we also have the knit, knitting machines that does all over Fair Isle. Right. Okay. So we, I think that's our favourite. Yeah. So anything really that comes in more basic panel shapes is done on the machine. But anything with more shaping or needing to be stranded and in the round at the same time, that would need to be done by hand. Yes, so. because the machines don't do in the round. Okay. They're all... Flat. flat so the any kind of smaller accessories like the hats that have the shaping gloves they need to be done by hand right. and the yoke section of those but the machine can do panels of fair isle as well so as long as it doesn't need a lot of shaping then um that's the part mm-hmm. that we enjoy the most <laughs> And then these are these sweaters are what you sell at the shop as well as some of the hats and gloves and things like people yes, go and yeah. buy a Shetland made sweater from you online, could they? Well, I don't actually have them on my website. Okay. They don't stay in stock long enough. No. <laughs> to have them on the website. The the accessories you can keep a stock yes, of. Yes, we can have um, a stock. But with the turnover of jumpers and things, then it's mostly in the shop. But you can in you can somebody could send you an email and ask if you have ask, something. Uh, yes, that's okay. Right. Okay. For bigger yeah. bigger thing. Okay. Because people will want to know that. How do I get one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why well, I'm sure that has kept you busy for quite a long time. Oh yes, we're busy all the time. And you used to take, you used to pack up the shop as well and go on to uh, craft fairs. Or yes, that's, that was a big part of my business. Um, I went to my first uh, trade fair in the, on the Scottish mainland in 1982. Wow. And uh, I've been to 33 trade fairs, but not for a number of years now because there's just so much to do here. So I don't wholesale as at all now, really. As the tourists industry and season here has grown so much more recently, and especially 
um, the popularity of knitting and knitwear um, has just completely changed in, mm -hmm. in the last few years. So before, you were really only knitting to sell finished garments, whereas now about half of the business is about knitters as well. So it's a big change it in is. a short time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love to be able to come and sit at that big table in the back of the shop and take a class and drink some tea and just knit along with you. I think that would be, you that would be like my dream vacation. Yeah, you will. Just you tell will. us when you're coming. <laughs> Something I'm really interested in is teaching children to knit. Yes. yes. And we do have a scheme here called the Piri Knitters. Mm -hmm. Piri is the dialect word for small. Right. And it was started in the schools. So we as volunteers go into the school one day a week for maybe an hour and teach the children knitting. And not you, well this not recently, but um, right. hopefully it'll all start again. And you, can give you the link. Go ahead, we sorry. Can, yeah, we can give you to link the link to that one. The Thule Shetland name is called Piri Markers, and you can find some information about them online. Um, and yeah, it's all run by volunteers and they do a lot of fundraising as well to get the materials and things that they need. Yep. Um, it was all kind of started up because we used to have knitting as part of the curriculum here because it was such a strong tradition. Um, but when that got dropped, then it really wasn't, we went from every child learning how to knit to only if you had somebody in your family that was able to teach you. So the volunteers going into school it has been just absolutely massive for the primary school children as well there it's before they go on to secondary school so it's quite young children that are learning to knit and taking it all on and mm. um, it's really amazing to see it is the grannies because in in the 1970s the oil industry arrived in shetland right. so that women who had relied on hand knitting for and machine knitting for to help their income they all went to work in the oil so it's, it's Granny Snow that are the main teachers. <laughs> it's similar with this missing generation that you find in a lot of places with um, knitting skills and craft skills, so that we had the same thing happen here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's nice to kind of bring it out again. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that my girls have learned. You know, I learned oh, from yes. my mother and my grandmother. And, I, and like you, Wilma, I don't really remember. I don't really remember learning. I mean, I remember... No. I remember getting more enthusiastic about knitting in my 20s, but I knew how to knit when I was small. But I don't remember yeah. someone telling me this is a knit stitch, this is a purl. I don't I don't remember that part really. No. So, but both of my girls learned now and I I can spin a little bit. My mother spins and she had oh, she had Shetland sheep here for a number mm. of years. So, I still have some Shetland fleeces in my closet. <laughs> I think spinning is just so special. Mm -hmm. To knit wool that you've actually spun has to be brilliant. Yeah, it is. And she's, my mom is really, she's very into spinning right now. And so she keeps bringing me, she keeps bringing me hand spun, which mm -hmm. makes me happy, of course. Yes. You know. so, oh, it's nice. beautiful. You know, she keeps bringing me and then, you know, there's a little tag in here with her handwriting you know that tells me <laughs> tells me what it is you know so she shows up with a little bag when she comes like, yay <laughs> it's so special yeah. yeah yeah it really is and now my girls are knitting as well you know they're teenagers and it's it, it is important to pass along those those traditional it's heritage yes. yeah, yes. absolutely yes. so and you're teaching the knitting belt and the long the long double pointed yes yeah, that's, yeah. I haven't gotten, I don't have that under control just yet. <laughs> but then we don't mind people using a circular needle. It's just that we prefer yeah, it's the just what we're double pointed to. needles and um, the knitting belt. And that's what is being passed on to the Piri Markers. It is, well, yes. Is mm -hmm. that the full tradition with the mark, with the mark and belt right. and, um, yeah, the the things that they can make, they they just pick it up so quickly, and um, it's so mm -hmm. nice to see. Yeah, that's wonderful. I just love that. I love that that's being passed on to the younger ones and carry on because it's important. It's so important, you know. And it's up to us to do it. Yes, that's absolutely true. Yep, it is. I, 
Mm -hmm. I'm doing a series on the channel right now, just a basic learn to knit. Mm -hmm. Because people, a lot of people don't have that in their local communities. They don't have a local yarn store. They don't have a shop where like yours, where maybe someone will help them if they bring a problem. I'm sure you have that where people bring you a problem and <laughs> help me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I also have, um, in normal times, I have a knitting night. Every second Monday, we, just a group of us, gather together in my, around my big table to knit. That's and wonderful. it's amazing how many young people have learned, have yeah. come and come to pick up tips. And, mm -hmm. and it's uh, I really enjoy when you can teach someone the basics and they pick up those kind of things and then they realize once you have that, you can really go on to make anything. It's true. It seems so daunting until you have that basics under your belt and then you can, there's so many options for what you can do next. You don't have to work through it. Every stage isn't so difficult if you have those basics. Right, right. It was, strange, it was strange how my knitting night started because there was one young girl who was really a beautiful knitter and she was learning and so keen to learn. And I said, Hannah, you should come and knit with me some night. Oh, oh that would be brilliant. Can my mom and my aunt come? <laughs> oh, so that was, <laughs> that was the start of the night. That was the start, yes. <laughs> and the, did the mother and the aunt already know how to knit? Yes, they did. Okay. But people just, it's, it's like so old-fashioned. When I was a child, women would gather together in someone's house just to knit and, and socialize, it's socialize, socialize and something. yeah, gossip and have tea and home bakes, <laughs> and, <laughs> and even for yourself, just taking the time to work on your project as well. You might not always just take the time to sit and keep going with it, so mm -hmm. it's good to have that social time where yeah. you're being productive as well. It's nice, and we've been trying to do that, you know, through COVID, we've been trying to do that on Zoom where yes. we just meet and you know we have our our cup and yeah. we're just chatting you know and it's it's people are looking people in my group really look forward to that even if it's only three or four people that show up on a Friday yeah. or maybe sometimes we have 20 people that show up yeah yeah it's lovely and so I look forward to I look forward to being able to visit one day and and I want to sit with you <laughs> yeah yes. you will you, you will. really will <laughs> I, my favorite thing is to just sit at the kitchen table with my kids and work on my hat and knit a little here. And I, I when I have a, a cap, a smaller hat like this, I like to just print the pattern and I just leave it on the kitchen table and I work on a few rows here and a few rows there as throughout the day, you know, in between things. And while I have my tea in the morning and it just kind of lives on the kitchen table until it's finished. I think all our kitchen tables are the same. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And then everyone looks when they walk past and <laughs> how far are you? And then I stay up too late. And then they see so much more the next morning and then they wonder why I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's just one more row before you go to bed and then another. So it is. But then I have to finish the crown because I love the crown. That's my favorite. Yeah, you yes. can't stop halfway no. with the crown. <laughs> it's no fun. I look forward to seeing what designs we all have coming up and <laughs> oh. okay. is, is that a hint? I'll be on pause, but you've been working on a few things. Yeah, but this has been a big job for me. So I think I'm on pause as well for a little <laughs> bit. Well, and Terry, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon or morning for me. It's just fantastic. We'll put all the links to your websites and your shop for both of you down below in the video description and obviously the pattern. So we're, our casting on, my group is, and viewers on the channel are casting on May 11th is when my first corrugated okay. rib video will be out and helping people <laughs> get started. So I so appreciate your taking the time to visit with me this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you. We'll keep an eye on the 11th. <laughs>